lunch at the market. Holy krizapple. What a day. Apple. That's been awesome. We had some great, great trades going into earnings from lunch at the market yesterday. We're going to leave all of our July weekly Apple trades on. As long as Apple stays above 370 by Friday, all the trades are going to go for full profit. Don't have to do a dang thing. It's worked out pretty terrific. In fact, it's really nice to see Apple's quarter because it lets us do a lot of things. For instance, now we have a good idea for a price target on Apple. You take Apple's almost $8 in earnings. We're going to slice off a, a little bit of that. We're going to slice off down to $7.50. We're going to take $7.50 and multiply that by four quarters. And then you're going to get $30 of full year EPS for Apple. We're going to take that full year EPS of $30 and give Apple a 15 multiple. Look, Apple's earnings are up almost 100% year over year on the quarter. So a 15 multiple is more than generous. In fact, Apple really should trade closer to a 20 multiple than a 15 multiple. But just for argument's sake, we're going to give it a 15 multiple on $30 of full year EPS. That'll take the stock to $450. There's a little bit of upside room from here. We also saw Apple print over $400 a share in the aftermarket. Now that we know where traders are willing to take the stock, we're going to go out to the January 2012 390, 395 mirror spread. So right at the money. Stock trades around 387, 88, 89. We're going to go to the 390, 395 slightly right just at the money mirror spread for free that's right we have a way to get you apple's upside for zero dollars now i don't know what the rate of return is on a trade in which you pay nothing to put it on but i know that at expiration it's worth five, five that's right five bucks so you get this trade for free it's a fantastic uh, trade Plenty of potential upside. The stock really doesn't, it, all it has to do is go to 395. If it goes anywhere north of where it printed in the aftermarket on the earnings, you're going to be just fine. You got plenty of time for this trade to work out, and it's going to get you to January's earnings in 2012, which again is a seasonally strong period of time for all earnings. All right, another trade that we have today, we got to get you protected Fortinet is being obliterated at about 24%. We need to do two things. One, we need to protect our F5. We have a very speculative 120, 125, or it might even be the 125, 130 out of the money weekly call spreads. To hedge that, we're gonna go with the August 110, 105, 100 put butterfly. The trade is at max profit if the stock gets pinned right at 105 meaning the stock can decline from 112 where it was during the day all the way down to 105. That's a $7. It costs us about 50 cents to put on that put butterfly and it's going to be worth $5 if we can get F5 to pin at 105. You have tons of options for this trade. Take it off as a whole entire butterfly and sell the butterfly if the stock gets around that level. You can see the butterfly shoot up to 2 or $3. That's going to be a great rate of return right there in your trade. Uh, if the stock goes all the way through the downside of the butterfly, blows through all the strikes, you can take your profit on the top of the butterfly and then throw the bottom of the butterfly out of the calendar and just turn it into a short put spread. We did this with a very small reasonable trade size, four butterflies, which means that we would end up with four short put spreads and potentially four long put spreads. So if we take the small end of it and we throw it out of the calendar, four put spreads is nothing. You can even roll down and out, increase the size of the position, and, and get pretty good, get under that $100 level for not too bad. The other thing we did right at the end of the day, when F5 was kind of selling off into the close, we sold the 95 90 put spreads hope, for about 90 cents. Hopefully, those, all the premium is going to come out of that. If F5 can hold above $100 a share, then the premium is going to come out of there. We're going to be just fine. So there's all kinds of things that we're going to be doing to defend that F5 position so that we don't even have to worry about the fact that uh, if it doesn't go our way, that those F5 weekly calls are just going to go. All right, the other trade that we're getting off of Fortinet is FIRE, Source FIRE, F-I-R-E. Again, this, the biggest pin action we're seeing off Fortinet is, F, uh, is FIRE getting obliterated. It's down 5.5% today in one trading day. So we're going to go with a 30, 25, 22 and a half butterfly. 
This one's a little lopsided. One wing is really short and one wing is a nice big wing. The reason that we want that short side for the downside of that is because we want to make sure that we can profit from this. If fire, when it reports earnings on August the 2nd, goes down, we want to be able to hit the eject button on our stock. We're actually long the stock. Right now the stock's at 28 bucks a share. We want to hit the eject button, 30 bucks a share, get rid of the stock, and then all we have to do, if the stock stays above 25, we're buttered. We don't do a dang thing. If the stock breaks through 25, then we take the bottom side of the put spread and we're going to throw it out on the calendar, turn it into a short put spread. Again, keeping the position size appropriate means that we can have room to double or even triple the size of our short put spreads. By doing that, we can throw that sucker out on the calendar. This is a really hot area. It's internet security. It's uh, anti-spyware, anti-spam. Uh, anti-hacking and all of these are areas where governments and big companies are going to have to shell out tons and tons of money. So while the timing might be bad now, if we throw it far enough out in the calendar, we do some things. Our big, big reason for getting this lopsided 30, 25, 22 and a half August put butterfly for source fire, ticker symbol FIRE, is to protect our long shares. So, the name of the game today is protection. We're going to protect our F5, we're going to protect our FIRE, our source fire, and we got, uh, we're going to get aggressive on Apple. Now that we've seen Apple print 400 in the after hours, we're going to look for the white of their eyes and we're going to go after more Apple gains because they had turned in an unbelievable quarter and they, they, they hinted that there was something that's going to be released in the next quarter that they're not even going to tell us what it is. iCloud is coming. I bet a new iPad is coming, new iPhone is probably coming, there's a huge product refresh, their new operating system is coming. There are all kinds of reasons to believe that Apple's next quarter is even better than this quarter. Plus, pretty soon we're going to get into seasonal trends, gifts for the holidays, people are going to be buying Apple products for themselves, back to school, people are going to be buying Mac MacBooks, iPads, you name it. We like Apple, that's where we're going, get that thing for free. It's a 390, 395, January 2012 mirror spread for zero dollars. It's worth an expiration. All right, so we've talked about position size a little bit. We got lots of questions from uh, viewers, listeners, talking about how do we know when to put on hedges. You hedge an event, like we hedged F5's earnings. We're gonna hedge FIRE's earnings, okay? The other thing is seasonally weak periods of the, of the calendar, like March, June, September where there's no earnings right before earnings season, those are seasonally weak periods. So when we go buy puts on the SPY, that's the S&P 500 tracking index ETF, when we buy SPY puts, we do that in times when we know the market's gonna be seasonally weak or for an event like the debt ceiling, ah! which is gonna be on August the 2nd. So make sure that when you go out and you get your protection, you do it at a time when the calendar is seasonally weak. That's the best chance that you have to buy those puts as a hedge. Otherwise, if you buy them in really strong times, like January, July, uh, this October, November, then there's it's very unlikely, unless the whole market goes to heck in a handbasket, that you're going to profit from your hedges. So make sure when you put on your hedges, you hedge it either an event that you expect to come up, or you pick a seasonally weak part of the calendar and get hedged. All right, thanks for joining us again for another episode of Lunch of the Market. Don't forget that premium service is coming up soon, so be on the lookout for that. And like us on Facebook to be alerted when a new article or a new video is out. Follow us at MO Financial on Twitter. All kinds of conference call updates and the best timing on your trades. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.